Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the meeting to order and start with our line of acknowledgement. The Hamilton Wentworth District School Board acknowledges our presence on an ancestral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee Confederacy land as determined by the Dish with One Spoon Treaty. The Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt represents the treaty relationship between the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and Anishinaabe with respect to sharing the land and resources thereon. The intent of this agreement is for all nations sharing this territory to do so responsibly, respectfully, and sustainably in perpetuity. We respect the long-standing relationships with the local Indigenous communities, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and the Six Nations of the Grand River. At this time, I'd like you to stand for the singing of O Canada. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'll just start by doing a roll call. In the room, we have Trustee, uh, Trustee Alex Johnstone, Trustee Marie Felix Miller, Trustee Becky Buck, Trustee Ray Mulholland, and Trustee G Cam Galindo. And of course, I'm chairing Trustee Danko. Um, in, on the phone, I'll just go through the roll call to see who we have on the line. Trustee Archer? Present. Thank you. Trustee Bingham? Present. Thank you. Trustee Deeth? Trustee Deeth? Present. Present. Thank you. Trustee Pakin Miller? Trustee Pakin Miller? Sorry, I was muted. I'm here. <clears throat> Thank you. And um, I have received notice that Trustee Tut will be a few minutes late. We also have our student trustees in the room, Trustee, student trustee Hessler and student trustee Zakar. Um, we do have regrets from the director Director Figueredo, and so Associate Director Zucker is the director's designate for tonight. We also have re regrets from Sago Wana Galvadot Segi, um, our other student trustee. With that, I'd like to move to item number three, approval of the agenda. I'll look to have that moved by Trustee Miller and seconded by Trustee Buck. Thank you. Um, looking to those in the room and on the phone, is anyone opposed? Seeing and hearing none, we can move along to item four, declarations of conflict of interest. Are there any declarations of conflict of interest for this meeting, noting I haven't received any in writing? Seeing none in the room on the phone, hearing none. Um, item five, we have correspondence from Jay Warenge regarding the relationship between the HWDSB and the Canadian Forces and the practice of writing letters. You'll see that in your package on 5-1. At this time, I'd be looking for a motion to receive and refer to staff. Uh, Trustee Galindo, thank you. Do I have a seconder? Trustee Miller, thank you. Are there any questions for clarification? Seeing none in the room, I'll go to the phone. Are there any questions for clarification? Hearing none, uh, is anyone opposed? Again, looking in the room. Seeing none, and on the phone, is anyone opposed? 
Hearing none, that passes, thank you. Uh, moving on to reports from trustee special committees. Our first item, number six, is the program committee from November 30th, 2020. I will turn that over to the committee chair, Trustee Buck. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so we met back in November last. Uh, we had several items to cover on the agenda, so it was a full night. Uh, our first was an action item regarding the international education, uh, our readiness plan for international students. Staff had identified the need for a resolution to confirm that HWDSB is prepared to welcome international students and confirm the completion and submission of the HWDSB readiness plan to the ministry. Um, I, uh, on the motion of Trustee Miller, um, we recommend that HWDSB confirm its support and commitment to the international education in compliance with the guidelines pertaining to a school board's readiness to accept international students as established by the Ontario Ministry of Education and the federal, uh, Canadian federal government. We also received a monitor, monitoring item, uh, the partnership priority update. Staff presented the partnership priority update providing the mid-year mid for us. The update covered a review of the partnership priority within the strategic direction and discussed the goal, target, and strategy, strategies for partnership. The impacts of COVID-19 were addressed with an emphasis on adapting and being responsive uh, and being a responsive team in support of the COVID response involving public health. Um, you can see from your package the, the details there. Uh, we had one other report, the Student Learning and Achievement. Uh, staff presented the report, which included a summary of the progress towards the 2019-20 uh, Student Learning and Achievement Annual goal, Plan goals and initial indicators of student learning, achievement, and engagement for the current school year. Staff provided highlights for the 2019-20 school year and identified impacts of the ministerial order. Staff restated the three goals for student learning and achievement and the three strategies to support these goals, which include investing in people, leveraging effective practices, and refining measures of progress. Uh, and with that, I would move the report. Okay, thank you. So Trustee Buck is moving to approve the report, noting we have an action item. Uh, I'll look to Trustee Archer to second the report, if that's okay, as you're on the committee. And at this time, I'll go to trustees for questions or comments. I'm going to start on the line uh, in reverse alphabetical order. Trustee Pakin miller do you have any questions? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Trustee Deeth? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Trustee Bingham? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, one question. Back with the um, international students, uh, have staff, through the chair, have staff or will staff be um, speaking with the uh, homestay or the, the, um, uh, the organizations who are bringing students over, if there have been any restrictions that have been put on for homestays? Um, because that would really affect how many international students we actually could be bringing in, whether they'd be coming into the country, they would need a place to stay, and that's, that's a huge one. And those who are uh, responsible for doing that, um, have there been any, any restrictions put on it that the students would not be able to come this way, even though we're ready for them, um, would they actually be able to be here? Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bingham. I'll go through the director's designate to Superintendent Dunlop. Thank you, Chair, and through you. Staff at the Welcome Centre have been in constant contact with the homestay uh, custodians about the plan to welcome international students. In addition, we have a very comprehensive plan that outlines all the requirements that students would have to meet, both pre-arrival, um, through travel, post-departure and then when they get here for quarantine and custodians are willing and able to take on all of those requirements. So we don't believe that will be a barrier. Thank you, Superintendent. Trustee Bingham, any follow-up? No, that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Trustee Archer, do you have any comments or questions? None at this time. Thank you. 
Thank you. Looking to trustees in the room and student trustees, of course, any questions to the report? Okay, seeing none, uh, we have the report uh, moved as an, with an action item. Is anyone opposed to approving the report? Seeing, looking in the room and on the line, is anyone opposed to approving the report? So seeing and hearing none, that is approved. Thank you, trustees. Moving on to item seven, our human resources, December 2nd, 2020 meeting, turning to the chair of the committee, Trustee Deeth. Uh, thank you. So at our meeting, there was uh, a few, just a few monitoring items. The one though, um, it was extremely important. And uh, item A, which is the HWDSB employment equity action plan was presented. If trustees have not had a chance, or maybe even those listening in, to read the 150-page report, I highly recommend it. It really is gives um, incredible insight into uh, you know, our hiring policies, our practices, and and where the gaps are, and where we need where there needs to be improvement. So, and I also want to thank um, this. This audit was triggered a, n a number of years ago, a few years ago, when the, um, as Superintendent Nunn explained to us, was back when uh, the red zones um, were highlighted and in inequities, and the work then uh, commenced. And this audit uh, it has been a very big part of that work. So, um, Tanya Turner. Uh, shared the findings of the employment equity audit, and the purpose was to review the policies and pr practices related to hiring. It was a very extensive audit, and uh, through the um, through the audit, there were 69 recommendations made. Um, and I'm really proud of our of the leadership I, I, I would say by superintendent Nunn and uh, director Figueredo um, in regards to this because normally when you have recommendations um, you know you try to adopt th those you can um, but of these 69 recommendations they have um, um, implemented or they will be implementing all 69 recommendations. And they also have an action plan, uh, which you will see here. They're going to be implemented implemented in one of three stages, uh, January to June 2021, July to December 2021, and January to June 2022. So, again, um, kudos to staff. It, it's a huge undertaking. It really is an enlightening audit, um, important work that's taking place. And uh, again, you know, thanks to the leadership and staff um, for for acting on this audit. Uh, item B is the um, enrollment projections and staffing, and uh, we did receive an update on secondary enrollment and staffing. And the projected enrollment uh, for secondary was down by 73 students. And all 30 secondary students declared redundant as of April 1st have been recalled and expanded to full-time permanent status. So that's good news. And uh, staff are currently working on the staffing process for semester two. And finally, item three, the employee attendance update is uh, for the first two months of the school year, the average board employee was absent point. 0.9 days for personal illness uh, as compared to September 2019 to October 31st, 2019. Um, so there has been a reduction of 0.27 days overall for personal illness absences and an increase of 0.3 days overall for COVID-19 related absences for the same time frame in the 2021 school year. Uh, through the reopening, Employee Support and Wellness continues to implement the Attendance Management Program and Early Intervention Program to promote staff well-being. And uh, with that, I'll remove I'll move the report. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Deeth. Um, so that's moving to receive the report. And I'll look to uh, Trustee Pakin Miller as the seconder. Uh, just noting that Trustee Tut has just joined us on the line. Trustee Tut, can I get you to confirm that you're with us? 
It's me. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Um, okay, so at this time, I will go to trustees starting in the room uh, to see if there are any questions or comments on the report. And I will um, highlight that you can watch the recording of the meeting. And uh, I know Trustee Bingham and I both joined in in the, the equity audit and the action plan was uh, very, very informative. I'm going to trustees on the line to see if there were any questions. So starting alphabetically at the beginning with A, Trustee Archer, do you have any questions? Nothing, nothing, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bingham. No questions, thank you. And uh, Trustee Pekin Miller? No questions, thank you. And Trustee Tutt? No questions, thank you. Thank you. So to the motion to receive the report, is anyone opposed? Looking in the room, seeing none on the line, is anyone opposed? Hearing none, that passes, thank you. We'll move along. To item number eight, our policy committee report from December the 9th, 2020. Uh, turning to the committee chair, Trustee Miller. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to bring forward tonight the report for the policy committee that uh, took place last Wednesday evening. Uh, we had several action items on the agenda on Wednesday. Um, the first was in regards to the education development charges policy alternative accommodations for school facilities and school sites and operating budget. The committee uh, considered the economic, excuse me, the education development charges EDC, um, specifically with regards to the alter alternative accommodations for school facilities and school sites operating budgets. They were up for their cyclical uh, review and uh, since the provincial government has actually removed uh, the legislation for the requirement uh, around these policies, staff uh, noted that our current EDC policies are in effect. However, the guidelines being developed by the ministry have not yet been released uh, to our school boards. Our new guideline, guidelines will be updated and brought back to policy for consideration once the ministry has updated their legislation. On the motion of Trustee Galindo, we uh, approved the recommendation that the EDC ch charges in the, excuse me, charges <clears throat> be uh, rescinded immediately. Item B, uh, the advocacy expenditures policy the committee considered the advocacy expenditures policy. The policy was up for its uh, typical cyclical review. And uh, as of now, there are no uh, legislative changes um, or any new requirements for this policy. There was a clarification around uh, what is considered a school generated fund versus a school council fund. Um, and it was noted that school generated funds refer to funds being taken in by the school. For example, school excursions or the lunch program, whereas school council funds under the act have a separate account and would involve specific fundraising activities. On the motion of trustee Buck, the policy recommends that the advocacy expenditures policy be approved. And that was also carried unanimously. Uh, we also reviewed recruitment and selection policy. The committee considered the rec recruitment and selection policy. Uh, legislative changes that came through the Ontario um, removal of regulation 274.12 uh, has impacted the recruitment and selection policy in terms of hiring practices. Staff have reviewed the policy and made changes needed to follow the revised regulations issued. The changes are to be implemented by the end of this year, December 31st, 2020. Uh, there was much discussion on this item. Um, once the amendments are approved, this policy will fall under a, its typical three-year cycle unless there is new legislation or trustees request uh, new changes. This new recruitment and selection policy will also be looking at the school census, so our student census, um, 
both using information gathered from our staff census that was collected last year, as well as the student census that we are rolling out this spring, and hopefully we'll be receiving the data from that uh, this coming fall. Staff, um, and, and thank you very much to senior, senior manager Francis, who clarified that staff would be working specifically with a steering committee to create the action plan and we'll be using information gathered from the employee equity audit in order to um, update and uh, renew our recruitment and selection policy. Uh, trustees asked, asked for clarification around some of the recruiting, recruitment training uh, that was highlighted in the policy report. And uh, staff manager Francis highlighted that uh, a, a variety of training will be provided to supervisors who are conducting interviews and hiring, including in-person, in virtual, and hiring toolkits from the entire organization in order to have full transparency. That will also include anti-oppression and anti-racism training for supervisors. On the motion, Trustee Buck, the policy recommends that the recruitment and selection policy be approved. That was also carried unanimously. And finally, the program committee uh, received the information around staff suggested changes to the inclement weather and board cancellations policy. The, cons the committee considered the inclement weather and board cancellations policy. Uh, that night we heard that there would be one addition made to the current policy, which is that during the closure of a school on a reg regularly scheduled school day, it would be expected that learning would continue. Trustees discussed, discussed this addition at great length, noting that there could be challenges for parents switching from in-school to remote learning for a day, and the policy and the possibility of this change causing undue stress for students, parents, and staff. There was further discussion around how this would affect our union groups. On the motion of Trustee Galindo to, uh, for the approval of this policy changed, uh, the motion failed, and you'll see the breakdown there in front of you. Um, so as it stands, the policy committee is not currently making any recommendation towards any changes to the inclement weather and board cancellation policy at this time. And with that, I would like to move the report. Uh, thank you, Trustee Miller. So a motion to approve the report from Trustee Miller. I'll look to Trustee Buck to second it. Thank you. Um, so I'll turn to trustees at this time to see if there are, are any questions. Uh, I'll go back to starting on the line. Um, starting in reverse alphabetical order, uh, Trustee Tut, do you have any questions or comments to the report? No questions, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Pakin miller uh, Actually, just a comment that uh, I did get an email from a parent, uh, two parents who were concerned about whether this policy would change and speaking exactly as Maria said, to the issue of the adjustment that it would require for parents to make that change to go back to online just for the day. And so I'm sure they'll be very happy to hear that nothing has changed, and that's the only comment I have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Trustee Pekin miller So that's speaking to item D. Thank you. Um, Trustee Deeth, any questions or comments? Uh, yeah, and speaking to item D as well, um, in regards to the inclement weather um, and board cancellations policy, I, I do understand that, um, you know, we have seen years where we've had uh, quite a few snow days. I think on average when we only have like one to three, it's not a big of an issue. And I know there are years when we've seen more, um, but I I. In, in reading through, and, and I have received emails as well, um, I don't think we are there yet. And so um, I, I appreciate that the motion is failing because I, I, same thing, parents concerned about um, having multiple kids at home or if the parent is a teacher and uh, trying to do remote learning as well as, as um uh, work with their children, or um, as we know, 
that internet, um, especially in, in the rural areas here, is unstable. And so I think it would create too much stress. So I don't think that we are there yet uh, to be able to do this. Down the road we may be, but I just I don't think this is the time either. So uh, I do support um, that uh, as it stands. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Deeth. Trustee Bingham. Uh, no questions at this time, and, and I agree. <laughs> Thank you. Trustee Archer. Nothing at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Turning to trustees and student trustees in the room, do you have any comments or questions to the report? Trustee Johnstone. Thank you. Um, just one, I guess one comment first uh, and then a question. So uh, speaking to item D, the inclement weather um, policy, I do want to note that uh, over the weekend I did receive a number of emails as well as tags on uh, social media from parents uh, expressing their desire not to have any changes to the policy and, and um, uh, expressing the fact that many families were feeling very overwhelmed as it was this year and the thought of adding additional work during a snow day uh, when parents had their own work responsibilities um, or having to arrange childcare that would um, facilitate, I guess, uh, the completion of additional work on or, or schoolwork on a snow day was, uh, was deemed to be very much a challenge to parents. So I want to recognize that parent voice that reached out uh, to myself. Uh, and as such, um, I certainly support the recommendation of the committee. That being said, I also recognize that there could be a number of discrepancies posed between uh, staff who are teaching uh, and educating in class versus remote, because uh, you presumably would be able to continue your instruction remotely, even on a snow day or an inclement weather day. Um, so my question is over through to staff, um, if uh, operationally that will be addressed, any of the discrepancies. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the director's designate, Associate Director Zucker. Uh, thank you, and I will turn to Associate Director Sovereign to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and through the chair. Um, so as discussed at the uh, policy committee, uh, should it be possible for um, learning to continue on this day operationally, uh, then the expectation it would be. Uh, so an example would be uh, an e-learning course uh, in our secondary schools. Um, they have in the past, and we would expect that they would continue to um, uh, proceed uh, because operationally the closure of the physical school uh, as per the policy uh, wouldn't uh, impede the ability to uh, continue with that instruction. That said, um, each individual circumstance would need to be taken under consideration. Uh, the reason I say that is that we do know at times uh, we would have staff uh, who would be in a physical building um, accessing resources within the physical building, whether they be a device, uh, internet connectivity and such. And because the actual physical building would be closed, uh, that would then pose a challenge in order to uh, provide that instruction. Uh, I will uh, ask uh, Superintendent Nunn if there's anything else to add from a working conditions uh, perspective. Thank you, Superintendent Nunn. Uh, thank you, and through the chair, the associate directors uh, captured it well. We would need to uh, work with our unions and our employee groups to define uh, what that working day would look like, knowing that there are uh, both uh, in-person uh, and uh, remote uh, learning opportunities currently happening within the board. Thank you, and just to clarify to the question, um, this would be with the policy as it stands, there's still an opportunity to clarify operationally what the working day looks like if the policy uh, remains as it, as it currently has been. I can go to Associate Director Sovereign. Yes, thank you, and, and through the chair, um, 
currently as it stands, the policy is in place. The policy has been in place for a number of years. We have had e-learning courses uh, over the last number of years. And so operationally, again, we have been dealing with it uh, as the policy stands currently. Trustee Johnstone. Um, th and thank you for the responses that I've received. Um, I just, um, I guess I look forward to hearing a little bit more at a later date in terms of, um, I guess, an update in terms of how any discrepancies that may be uh, created due to the new reality that our staff are, are working in, uh, that those discrepancies be resolved if, if they do exist. Um, so with that, thank you very much. Thank you. Are there further questions from trustees or student trustees on the report? Trustee Buck. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I think it's worth noting that uh, our students have missed quite a number of days this year. Uh, and I say this year, I mean 2020 as a whole. Uh, on the surface, when I looked at this report or and this recommendation, I thought, a, yay, a way to... Um, capture some of that lost time instead of adding to that deficit. As we talked about it, um, it became clear that there wasn't, um, the, the stress to staff has already been exceptional this year. Uh, and this would likely only add to that stress. So uh, that was the clincher for, for myself. Um, and uh, just looking at it from that one perspective, there are actually many facets of it. Um, but when we look at all that they've had to do, all that they are doing, uh, it, I didn't feel this was a, an equitable, um, uh, I didn't feel this was an equitable way to try and recapture some of that lost time. So uh, as my colleagues have said, I will be supporting um, recommendation. Thank you. Any further questions? Trustee, um, so Trustee Miller, yes, you've moved to the report, but you haven't commented. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, I, I do want to just speak a little bit. Um, we had a, a fantastic uh, conversation at policy uh, around what exactly this, this policy change would mean for our students, uh, for our parents. Um, I think uh, Trustee Johnstone has highlighted very, very honestly that if a snow day has been called um, and you are a parent, you are now you know, looking to take care of your children but possibly still have your regular job. Um, you may or may not be able to stay home with them. Um, there, there were several inequalities that came, became very apparent uh, for our student population. So access to devices, access to Wi-Fi. Um, there were very, very uh, specific questions around, you know, on a snow day, often we wake up at six in the morning to those robocalls and, you know, staff may not have their equipment with them. So is a teacher or an educator going to be able to send out an email to, th you know, a classroom full of students, um, our parents going to be kept in the loop of exactly what the expectations are. Um, so all of those, those questions were very, very real um, around how we support our students in, a, in this type of a change of policy, how we support our staff who are, who are using our buildings and our potentially our you know, Wi-Fi access and our resources. Uh, if they're suddenly at home, are, are they expected to, to provide synchronous learning? Are they expected to have documents up on the hub? Um, all of those are very important um, considerations. To be quite honest, um, we are not in a, in a pla place currently where we can make this policy change feasible um, without, I think, uh, a large expense to us as a board, and a large, a large amount of stress uh, across the boards from our, our staff to our parents to our students. But moreover, I, I just want to add one um, quick comment, just to say, in my opinion, I'm I'm also very 
concerned around making this level of a policy change during a time of crisis or emergency. Um, I don't think that we should set a precedent as a board uh, to sign on for these types of changes in moments where we are still kind of in a panic mode, frankly. Um, we're still navigating uh, COVID-19 and what this has all meant uh, for everyone in our community, in our various communities. Um, so that was, that was one of my, my very real concerns with this. Um, but then as we, we kind of broke it all down from a practical standpoint, I think it is fair to say we're not there yet. We may be there one day, but as it stands now, um, we, I personally don't think that we can, we can take this on at this moment. So um, I very much respect what, what folks have shared here today. Uh, and that discussion Wednesday night definitely got me thinking about it from a variety of angles, but uh, that's just my comment. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Miller. And seeing no further comments in the room, I do have a question actually on item C, um, and I'll I'll go through the director's designate to I guess Associate Director Sovereign. Just on item C, um, I I know that we discussed this at the policy committee. I was able to join in, um, but there aren't particular references to seniority in the policy, and that would likely belong in our procedure. Um, is that all captured through our collective agreements where seniority is honored uh, when, when people are hired for different positions? Thank you, and through the chair, actually, I'll defer that question to Superintendent Nunn as uh, Human Resource Services. Thank you, Superintendent Nunn. Uh, thank you, and through the chair, uh, through the policy, uh, through the procedure, excuse me, um, we will reference our local collective agreements. And further to that, um, we will also honor our local collective agreements as it relates to um, hiring our hiring practices for both in both elementary and secondary uh, over and above the procedure through the work that we'll do with administrators. Thank you. Okay, at this time we'll look for a vote to approve the report. I'm looking to trustees in the room, is there anyone opposed to approving the report? Seeing none on the phone, is anyone opposed to approving the report? Hearing none, that is approved, thank you. Okay, moving on at this time to reports from legislative committees. Item nine is our special education advisory committee from November 25th, 2020. Uh, Trustee Buck, are you able to bring that report? Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, my last night with SEAC uh, was um, the end of November, or sorry, last week. Um, sorry, it was the end of November. The days are melding, I'm so sorry. Um, we had an overview of the virtual summer learning GLE uh, from uh, Meredith Strongman, System Learning Resource Teacher, and Jen Hart, System Learning Consultant. Uh, they provided an overview of the GLE course. Uh, the GLE course is designed specifically for students with IEPs. Course GLE 10 and 20 focuses on learning strategies to help students become more independent learners. Uh, Course GLE 30 and 40 improves students' learning and personal management skills, preparing them to make successful transitions to work, training, and or post-secondary education destinations. The course was offered in July 2020 as a four-week remote learning credit, targeting incoming grade 9 students as well as grade 10, 11, and 12 students. There were 80 students enrolled, 74 received full credits. Um, I did my update, and uh, Superintendent Peggy Blair, uh, she gave an up update um, mentioning the pilot to improve school-based supports for students with ASD. The board has partnered with two applied behavior in analysis providers to provide ABA services for students with autism during the instructional day at an elementary school to reduce the number of transitions and increased time in the classroom for students in the pilot. Um, 
she noted uh, a staffing change, uh, actually three staffing changes, um, and with that, I would move the report. Uh, thank you. So, Trustee Buck, moving to receive the report. Trustee Johnstone seconding. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions to the report starting in the room this time? Looking to trustees, student trustees. Seeing none, on the line I'll go in alphabetical order. Trustee Archer, do you have any questions? Trustee Archer? Hello, nothing. Thank you. And Trustee Bingham? No questions at this time, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Deeth? No questions. Trustee Pekin Miller? No questions. And Trustee Tutt? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, with that, the report is moved. Uh, motion to receive. Is anyone opposed? Looking in the room, is anyone opposed to receiving the report on the line? Seeing and hearing none, we can. That, that's approved, and we'll move along to item number 10 the French as a Second Language Advisory Committee. And I'll just remind trustees on the line to mute yourselves for now. Uh, Trustee Johnstone, are you able to bring forward the report for French as a Second Language Advisory Committee? Yes, I can. Um, so the committee met on November 25th. Um, it, there were... Um, so there's five monitoring items. Uh, student representatives uh, were welcomed, uh, Katie Kim from Ancaster High, and uh, Zakiko Daisy Lee from Westdale. Um, as well, there is a review of the 2020-2021 work plan. Um, so in November, um, uh, the discussion was on remote learning program. January is DELF, student enrollment engagement. March will be a review of the teacher recruitment grade one application process. In May, uh, they will review transportation. Um, item, I guess the third item was uh, a advice session on elementary remote learning. Uh, following that, there was program presentation on digital French as a second language resources. And finally, there was updates uh, from uh, the various members. And that completes the report. Thank you. So Trustee Johnstone moving to receive the report. I'll ask Trustee Tut to second that. Um, and going to trustees to see if there are any questions or comments. Uh, start with you, Trustee Tut. No questions, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Pekin Miller. No questions, thank you. Trustee Deeth. No questions, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bingham. No questions, thank you. And Trustee Archer. No questions, thanks. Thank you. Looking to trustees and student trustees in the room, are there any questions, Trustee Buck? Yes, thank you. I'm looking at uh, item C, advice session around elementary remote learning. It says no advice was provided. Um, could we have a little clarity around where the conversation had gone? I can't assume that we have got it 100% right yet. So uh, uh, through the chair. Uh, thank you. Through the uh, director's designate, I believe, to Superintendent Dunlop, if she was at the meeting. Uh, no? Superintendent Torrens. Oh, sorry, Superintendent Torres, Torrens. Uh, and through the chair, <clears throat> we, uh, we had, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, staff did present a high level overview of the uh, history of um, uh, remote learning uh, up to the end of November. Uh, and spoke to the type of programming uh, both in French immersion and core French. Uh, there were a, a number of questions taken by staff, some conversation. However, the, <clears throat> at this point, the committee uh, had not made any recommendations or provided any advice on how programming could be improved. However, I will note that 
um, the digital resources uh, in item D uh, came back to uh, remote learning uh, or remote learning was referred to. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> as noted, uh, the committee uh, very much so wanted to ensure that the remote or the digital resources available in remote learning were available to all educators. Thank you, Trustee Buck. A follow up? No further questions. Thank you for that clarification, Superintendent Torrance. And thank you. So, seeing no further questions, uh, to the motion to receive the report, is anyone opposed? Looking in the room, on the phone, anyone opposed? Seeing and hearing none, that's approved. Uh, next, we'll move along to reports from the Standing Committee from December 7th, 2020. I'll turn to Vice Chair Galindo to bring forward the report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in front of trustees, they should have the committee report for Standing Committee that took place last Monday. Uh, aside from approval of the agenda, no declarations of conflict of interest were declared. Uh, trustees received a report from staff on transportation where staff presented um, the transportation report currently uh, in the procurement process to renew the contracts that are expiring at the end of August 2021. Uh, the current school year was the 12th start off for HWSTS. The report provided a preliminary overview of the student transportation solution for the current school year. Uh, including a number of highlights, metrics, comparisons to prior school years and overview of key com accomplishments from the previous school year. Of course, the biggest challenge for the start of this year was the bus driver shortage, which, was, uh, which also affected multiple school boards and consortiums across Southern Ontario. The shortage was increased by drivers who did not return as a result of COVID-19. Uh, there were 22 open routes that became part of the rotating cancellation plan starting at the end of September. This number was then reduced to five open runs at the end of November. Uh, there were an additional 1,000 students requiring transportation in September due to an increase in enrollment, uh, including schools under construction that required new students to be bused uh, to the holding locations. Uh, there will be new schools opening next month that will also require additional transportation. HWSTS staff has worked diligently with school staff and bus operators to assist in any way possible to offer temporary routing, uh, routing suggestions, solutions, communications to help minimize the impact on students and schools. In addition, the organization slash consortium has worked with a consultant to consolidate returns and reduce the number of routes. Staff also transferred routes from providers that were experiencing more shortages to other providers. So on the motion of Trustee Bingham, seconded by Trustee Miller, Standing Committee recommends that the transportation report be received. That was carried unanimously. Back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair Glindo. And so that's a motion to um, receive the report. I'll look for a seconder, Trustee Buck. Thank you. Um, at this time, are there any questions to the, the report? Uh, I do have one update that Trustees might like to hear from um, Associate Director Zucker if you'd like to share that to start. Uh, thank you, and through the chair, I just did want to let trustees know that as of today, all the rotating cancellations are complete. So we have no further rotating cancellations uh, in, in our board or in the Catholic board. Thank you, that's excellent news. So looking to trustees in the room, any questions or comments to the report? Seeing then, I just will note that Trustee Archer has had to step out of the meeting. Um, she'll let us know when she's back. Uh, on the phone, Trustee Bingham, do you have any questions? No questions, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Deeth? No questions, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Pakin miller No questions, thanks. Thank you, and Trustee Tutt? No questions, thank you. Thank you. To the motion to receive the report, is anyone opposed? Looking in the room, seeing none on the line, is anyone opposed to receiving the report? Hearing none, that passes. Uh, next item, 11B, Trustee Galindo, can you bring forward the Committee of the Whole private session from earlier this evening? Yes, thank you. Through the Chair, it is my pleasure to present the report of the private session of the Committee of the Whole held earlier this year. It's a very extensive report. That the Human Resources Committee report from December 2nd be received. That concludes my report. Back to you, Madam Chair. 
Thank you, and I'll look for a seconder from the phone, uh, Trustee Bingham, if that's okay. So at this time, any comments or questions to the report from Committee of the Whole? Seeing in the room there are none on the line. Okay, is anyone opposed to receiving the report or approving the report? Seeing no one opposed in the room, on the line, anyone opposed? Okay, seeing and hearing none, that is passed. Next, I will turn the chair over to Vice Chair Glindo. Thank you, Madam Chair. We will now move to item 12, which is a written notice of motion. And I will turn to Chair Danko for um, that. Uh, thank you, trustees. We'll see on page 12-1, a notice of motion, and I will read through this. Whereas the approved governance review will take months to complete, and whereas the trustee code of conduct states in item four, it is expected that whenever possible, allegations of a breach of the code of conduct by a trustee shall be investigated following the informal complaint procedure in the spirit of collegiality and the best interests of the board. The first purpose of alerting a trustee to a breach of the code is to assist the trustee in understanding his or her obligations under the code. And whereas the trustee code of conduct items 10 and 11 allows for remedies to be applied in the informal complaint procedure and for a complaint to proceed to the formal complaint procedure if a remedy cannot be agreed upon or a breach is serious or recurring. And whereas there is a lack of clarity around the requirements to share a complaint with trustees when there are grounds for a refusal to conduct a formal code of conduct inquiry, and whereas only serious and or reoccurring breaches of the code of conduct by a trustee should be investigated following the formal complaint procedure, be it resolved that the trustee code of conduct governance procedure be updated immediately to reflect the process of following the informal complaint procedure initially, wherever possible, and then a formal process after a breach has been identified and submitted to the chair of the board if appropriate. This would require an update to item number four. Also, a form shall be completed for any code of conduct complaint, but will not specify formal or informal. This would be an update to item 10. The chair and vice chair or alternates, if applicable, will determine whether a complaint should be investigated through a formal complaint procedure. This would be an update to item four and removal of item 12. Um, you can see then there are updated sections. The updates would include for identifying a breach of the code, item four, Wherever possible, any allegations of a breach of the code of conduct by a trustee shall be investigated following the informal complaint procedure initially, as it is recognized that from time to time, a contravention of the code may occur that is trivial or committed through inadvertence or an error of judgment made in good faith. In the spirit of collegiality and the best interests of the board, the first purpose of alerting a trustee to the breach of the code is to a breach of the code is to assist the trustee in understanding his or her obligations under the code. Only serious and or reoccurring breaches of the code by a trustee should be investigated following the formal complaint procedure. This would be determined by the chair and vice chair or an alternate should the chair or vice not be able to participate in the investigation process. Under informal complaint procedure, item 10 would read, the chair of the board on his or her own initiative or at the rest request of a trustee who alleges a breach of the code has occurred and has completed the appropriate form, may meet informally with a trustee who is alleged to have breached the code to discuss the breach. The purpose of the meeting is to bring the allegation of the breach to the attention of the trustee and to discuss remedial measures to correct the offending behavior. The informal complaint procedure is conducted in private and the form will be available in the director's office. Under the formal complaint procedure, we would see a removal of item 12. And I've listed the current language for the items four and 10 uh, below on the paper, but I will not read those. With that, I would like to move this notice of motion. Thank you, Trustee Johnstone or Trustee Danko. Before I open the floor up to questions, I do need a seconder for the motion. I'm seeing uh, Trustee Johnstone's hand, so uh, the motion is seconded by Trustee Johnstone. Uh, I will open this up to questions. Uh, I was going to go on to folks on the line first, but seeing as how it's uh, a motion by Trustee Danko, I'll turn to Trustee Danko first, followed by Johnstone, if she has any comments. Uh, thank you, and through the chair. Is, at this point, um, we have uh, had the opportunity to explore our code of conduct and uh, I can recognize that there are some areas where it is silent or there are contradictory statements and the contradictory statements I think have been highlighted in the, in the notice of motion where I'm seeking to see a change. 
I believe um, that this is an opportunity to improve the code of conduct uh, so that wherever possible, we do initiate an informal complaint procedure, but there is an, a, an avenue to move to a formal complaint procedure, and that would be done by independent parties um, who nece haven't necessarily brought forward a complaint, so the chair, the vice chair, or an alternate. Um, I, I believe this will help uh, improve overall relations within the board. I think this will help improve our procedures and having a timely response when there is a complaint brought forward as the formal code of conduct can actually be quite cumbersome. Um, so I, I hope trustees will support this, recognizing that we do have a full governance review happening and I believe that we will have opportunities to further improve our code of conduct procedure. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Danko. Uh, does Trustee Johnston have any questions or comments? Perfect, turning over to you. Thank you, and through the chair. Um, as uh, the mover of the motion for the governance review, I fully support um, the immediate changes to our code of conduct. Uh, and our code of conduct, of course, lives within our, our board governance. Um, I wanna highlight that uh, the code of conduct is owned collectively by the board. Therefore, it is appropriate for the board to collectively direct the process rather than having a single trustee direct the process. Um, I think that this, uh, these improvements to the code of conduct process helps us to focus on resolution as a board of trustees and aligns with the spirit of the code of conduct. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Johnstone. I'm looking for other trustees in the room to see if there are any questions or concerns before I open it up to folks on the phone. I'm looking at Trustee Miller. Go ahead. Thank you, Trustee Galindo. Um, just one question. Acknowledging that we are looking to conduct our full governance review, specifically uh, one that looks at a rule book from an anti-racism, anti-oppression, uh, framework, um, hopefully this year or sometime in the very near future, um, would we then be able to re-review these current items? So I'll turn to Trustee Denko. Uh, yes, to the chair, that would be absolutely the intention that a full review and revision could be done at that time. Trustee Miller. Thank you so much um, for that clarification. I, I will say um, I, I appreciate the, this motion very much. I think it's going to address a lot of the, the, the gray area and um, I think hopefully can, can make some of uh, the work a little bit more seamless and a little bit less cumbersome. Um, and, and I appreciate uh, the, the acknowledgement of where there have been some sort of, you know, just the acknowledgement to try to make the process more clear for, for all of us here at the table, um, more efficient, but also just, uh, as Trustee Johnson said, in the, in the spirit of our governance rules, which is just that we you know you try to make sure that every trustee is behaving in a manner that is professional and in accordance to the, the rules around the table. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Miller. Are there any other trustees in the room with questions? Turning to folks on the line, I'm gonna start with reverse alphabetical order. Trustee Tut, do you have any questions? Yeah, my only, my only kind of, I guess it's more of a, a comment than anything. I would have liked, I, I understand the, the spirit of this motion, but I, I think it would have made more sense if the committee had met and done its work and then something of this fashion would have arisen out of that. But, um, but on its face, reading through the language, I have no immediate concerns with it. I think it's headed in, in the absolute right direction. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Tut. Uh, Trustee Pakin Miller, do you have any questions?
Trustee Pekin Miller. I'm on mute now. Am I off mute? Okay. No, we, now, now I no can hear. No questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Turning to Trustee Deeth. Uh, I don't think any questions. I, I appreciate all the work that um, Trustee Danko, uh, Chair Danko, has done around this, um, having gone through through it with her. Um, and knowing that there there needed to be some changes, there were gray areas, and a lot of work had to be done. So, I think this is a great first step. I, I think it does need a full review, uh, but I think this is a great first step. So, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Deeth. Trustee Bingham, do you have any questions? No questions, but I am in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Archer. Just making sure that uh, you're not there. I do believe you stepped out. Uh, so that covers everyone. So we're going to move to a negative vote, starting with folks on the line. Is anyone voting against the motion by Trustee Danko? Hearing none, I'm looking at trustees in the room to see if anyone is voting against. Seeing none, the motion is carried unanimously. Thanks so much, everybody. And I'm turning the chairhood back to... Danko. Uh, thank you. So at this time, we'll move on to item 13, oral reports. And the most exciting one always is our student trustees report. Student trustee Zakar. Thank you, and through the chair. For both uh, secondary and elementary student senate, we have outlined our year's goals, which focus on student health and success. Following the break, we will begin to map out strategies to achieve our goals and put those into motion. In addition, Secretary Senate uh, previously met with Public Health, where student feedback was attained in order to create signage for teens regarding COVID-19. Secondary Senate also met with the Safe Schools and Billing Panel to review their draft recommendations for their final report. At this time, we currently don't have any uh, upcoming events with Austin Aiko. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from trustees in the room or comments? Trustee Donstone? Um, I'm just curious what the feedback was from Student Senate with both uh, to public health as well as to the bullying uh, review. If you could just provide a couple of highlights, that would be much appreciated. Thank you. Student Trustee Zakar? Thank you. Uh, in regards to public health, the suggestions given by the students were how how likely uh, high school students were to respond to the rules and regulations set out. And for um, the Safe Schools and Bullying panel, the suggestions were the, in regards to the priority of some of the draft recommendations, so which were the most uh, relevant and highly important. Thank you, Trustee Johnston. Thank you. I might connect a little bit more offline. I think um, student voice in both of these areas, um, I appreciate, uh, I guess, the feedback from the Student Senate because uh, they should be the driving force be behind both. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments in the room? Okay, going to those on the line, Trustee Bingham, any questions or comments? No comments, no questions. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Deeth? Uh, no questions. I, I think sort of along the lines of what uh, Trustee Johnson was saying is um, in regards to maybe getting more um, uh, feedback from students around the, the safe school review, um, it, it would be, uh, I think it would, would help us. Um, I'm, I'm assuming maybe a question, was, was that voice captured, I'm assuming, by the uh, by the committee and will that be brought back to trustees as part of the review? I'm not sure if their student trustees can answer that. Uh, student trustees Zakhar, are you able to comment? Uh, I, we don't know whether um, that information will be brought to the... We can certainly take that question away and make sure that we have an answer for tomorrow. Anything further, Trustee Deeth? No, thank you, and uh, and thank you to our student trustees. It's it's a difficult year for them, and appreciate 
how hard they're working to continue to support students. So thank you. Thank you. Trustee Pakin Miller? Yeah, I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you. And Trustee Tut? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to both of our students again for all of the work that you've been doing and making it work in this unusual time. Hopefully there will be some events planned that you can participate in in the new year. Uh, next, we will move along to the director's report. Uh, so to our director designate, uh, Associate Director Zucker, do you have any comments? Uh, thank you. And through the chair, I couldn't sit here and not say anything. So uh, I'm excited to bring this forward. Uh, I just wanted to highlight that uh, this past month, uh, we've been working on the board annual plan so that we can establish uh, clear goals and targets for our five priorities. We will be sharing the plan at the June 13th system leaders meeting. And again, this is all happening as we continue to support our staff and students through many COVID-19 challenges. Uh, the next thing I wanted to highlight, <clears throat> excuse me, was that our revised budget is due to the ministry this week. And as a result of the stabilization funding, we will be submitting a budget that does not require ministry approval. Um, and we'll be, we will be bringing an update uh, to trustees at the, the Thursday, December 17th Finance and Facility uh, Committee meeting. So this Thursday, we will give an update as to exactly where we are. But again, the good news is that we will not be over the 2% um, of our operating um, allocation, which means we do not need any further ministry approval. And lastly, and most importantly, I want to acknowledge that this is Superintendent Jeff Gillies' last official board meeting. Uh, Jeff has, as we know, is retiring, has served the students in, in, of HWDSB tirelessly for the last five years. Valued member of EC's hard work, dedication, knowledge um, will definitely be missed. Uh, Estella, who is Estella Jones, she's currently the principal of Ryerson, will be the new um, Family of Schools One superintendent. And we do look forward to welcoming her to the team in January. And although this is a little bit more difficult to do remotely, but please join me in congratulating Jeff and wishing him all the best. So perhaps you can turn on a microphone. And Jeff will be back in an unofficial, well, I guess official capacity to present our school year calendar, but um, he is doing that out of the goodness of his heart. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that update and uh, congratulations to Superintendent Gillies on, on um, retirement, I, I think. Yep, and uh, certainly you'll be missed, but we're, we're glad you can't stay away and you're coming back for the school year calendar. I'll turn to trustees. Are there any comments or questions? Um, I'll start with those on the line. Trustee Tut. No questions. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Deeth. Sorry, Tr Trustee Pekin Miller. Yes. Um, am I off mute? You are. Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess that. Uh, we, the comments that I wanted to make were made just now, and that is that I have really enjoyed working with Superintendent Jeff Gillies, and I'm going to miss his wisdom and his guided hand, but I'm looking forward to finding a new friend in Estella Jones, uh, and I just want to say thanks to Superintendent Gillies for everything he's done with and for me. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Trustee Pekin Miller. Trustee Deeth? Uh, no, just echoing, um, you know, I wish I could be there to, uh, in person to, to thank Superintendent Gillies and, and, and just wish him all the very best and, and good luck on your retirement and uh, don't be a stranger. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bingham. And echoing absolutely everyone's congratulations, Jeff, on, on uh, your retirement. I am looking forward to Estella becoming um, the superintendent. And I know she's got some big shoes to fill, but at the same time, she's an amazing lady. So uh, it'll be wonderful to work with Estella uh, as well. Um, 
So congratulations again. Uh, thank you. And Trustee Archer's not back with us just yet. Turning to trustees in the room, uh, any comments, Trustee Johnstone? Um, as a uh, trustee who had uh, or has had uh, Superintendent Gillies is uh, one of my superintendents I work directly with, I just want to say uh, to Jeff, thank you so much for, uh, uh, it's been a great pleasure working with you over the last few years. I wish you the very best in your upcoming retirement and similar to Trustee Deeth, I I hope to continue to hear from you. Uh, you've certainly had a tremendous impact on the students and staff and families here at HWDSB, so thank you. Thank you, Trustee Johnstone. Anything further? Trustee Galindo? Thank you. I sound like a broken record here, uh, but I do want to echo the sentiment by my colleagues and Associate Director Zucker. Uh, Superintendent Gillies is the area, or was the area superintendent for uh, the schools that I represent in wards nine and 10. Um, and being that he was the first uh, superintendent of student achievement that I engaged with as a trustee, I was exposed to a different perspective on education uh, that I hadn't experienced before. And I was able to appreciate what it really meant to work with individuals who are truly passionate about education and really changing the lives and molding the lives of young people across our system. And, and that's a perspective that uh, I've certainly uh, taken on uh, in my role as a trustee and, and I'm very thankful for that opportunity. I've often, and I never told Jeff this, but now that he's retiring, I'll, I'll say it now. I've, I've always looked up to Jeff and, and I've always considered him uh, a mentor and as someone who, who uh, I, I think, we're definitely going to feel the impact of his role and his work for many decades to come. And then the ramifications of that will also be felt by generations of, of young people who have gone through our system uh, while uh, Jeff did his work here. So I'm, I'm very thankful for, for all the work that he did and, and um, uh, sad to, to see him uh, retire. But I, I know that uh, his legacy will, will be felt for, for a long time. So thanks so much, Jeff. Thank you. Seeing no further comments, I'll move along to our last item, uh, the chair's report. So I did have an opportunity to speak at our last board meeting, but um, tonight I just wanted to express my gratitude to trustees, to staff, to our families, and to our students. Because when I reflect on what we normally talk about and celebrate this time of the year, those are all things that we're not doing. We're not doing concerts. We are not doing bazaars. We are not able to celebrate, um, you know, student artwork in the way that we typically would. And yet we've gotten here and we've gotten through it together. And I know we've had bumps and I know there's been frustrations, but ultimately we've all come together to just do our best to get through this. And I was excited to hear today that the first vaccines in Canada for COVID were administered. And so, this has been a long haul, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel and it is, it's coming. It, there's, there is a date that we can strive for. And I'm going to ask people, you've done a fantastic job at following all of the protocols to help keep one another safe. Because wearing my mask isn't about me, it's about keeping the people around me safe. And so I'm going to just reach out to our system, to our families, to our staff and just please ask you to continue to keep one another safe, to keep one another in mind when you're going about your business over the holidays. Um, I, I want to just acknowledge that uh, when I think of today, the phrase that comes to mind is I'm ready for a long winter's rest. And it may not be a long rest, but I hope that the break that we have coming up is going to be that chance that we all need to decompress and to reset and to recharge uh, so that we can come back and we can come back together and continue to collaborate and work together through the next few months, through the next half of a year, uh, and, and with the outlook being hopeful that we can see education start to return to um, something more what we're used to, something more of a normal. So at this time, uh, I'll keep it very brief and just wish everyone a very happy holiday. Uh, for those who celebrated a very Merry Christmas, um, please stay safe and stay well. With that, I will look for, unless anybody needs to comment, uh, I was going to look for a motion to adjourn.
Trustee Mulholland, would you like to do the honors? And uh, seconded by Trustee Miller, thank you. Um, is anyone opposed to adjournment? Seeing none in the room on the line. Hearing none, thank you everyone. Have a wonderful night and a wonderful holiday.